the objectives primarily are focused on preparing a workforce for the grand challenges of the 21st century. And in doing that, providing a unique applied platform of experiential knowledge to the students so that they can be prepared to enter the workforce and contribute immediately to companies and other institutions. We work in a lot of different areas. So I have two major thrusts in my research group. Uh, one is the Medicines for All Institute, and that is an organization that was formed several years ago in collaboration with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to try and increase access to healthcare, both locally, nationally, and internationally. We received about $60 million in funding from the Gates Foundation to establish these world-class laboratories here. And uh, over the last eight years, we've developed new, more cost-effective and uh, environmentally uh, friendly processes for all the first-line therapies for HIV, malaria, tuberculosis, and COVID. And we have a critical mass of these efforts where we're being funded by the state to be able to create a end-to-end -end capability to take discoveries and move them from the laboratory directly into the commercial operations. So our 3D printing, we started I guess the Innovation Lab back in 2015, 2016, I was originally tasked with like bringing more hands-on practical engineering concepts into the classroom. And then also it's segued into other departments. So biomedical has been used in a lot of 3D printing for um, some of their courses. And then a lot of the students, when they get to their senior year, they're doing a lot of different designs for like prosthetics or machinery, robotics, and they come to us for 3D printing. So the research in my lab uh, focuses on understanding the electrical activity of the brain and translating that into an actionable output. A lot of our work is really exploratory early stage research. My PhD students, including Michael and I, work closely together to both understand the theoretical aspects of the underlying neuroscience and also the computational aspects and analysis aspects. I'm working on the signal processing on a project to better understand how um, epilepsy arises as a result of traumatic brain injury in certain instances. So we're focused on identifying distinct electrophysiological signals in rats' brains to better understand the development of epilepsy following these severe injuries. We work really closely with the neurology department and the neurosurgery department looking at patients with movement disorders, so specifically patients with Parkinson's disease and essential tremor, and looking at neural signals collected from deep brain stimulation devices and trying to find patterns in the neurological data that can tell us something about the underlying disease, side effects, and how we can use that to basically treat these patients better. My lab at VCU is the Advanced Magnetic Materials Processing Lab. So magnetic materials are ubiquitous. Uh, they're used in wide-ranging electronic as well as consumer uh, appliances. And from the industry base, uh, they are indispensable for energy technologies that range from energy production using wind turbines as well as for electric cars and for traction motors used in batteries. So the future of manufacturing is going to be additive manufacturing, particularly because it changes the way uh, in which we look at conventional materials processing. And so there's a lot of thrust in the College of Engineering, particularly in the mechanical department, to teach 3D printing technologies to their students. In every research area, we are dealing with collections and processing of vast amounts of data, from physics to computational chemistry to computer science or medicine. So today we have such large amounts of data that we need to have high performance computing in order to accelerate this kind of research and discovery. There is no cybersecurity without artificial intelligence these days, and there is no artificial intelligence without considering safe and secure AI. These days, given enough processing power, data, and enough time, we can train and model pretty much any complex system. But the question is, can we do it in real time when real time decisions are necessary? Can we do it in a safe, secure way? Can we do it in a way that is fair, unbiased, explainable, trustworthy, etc.? A lot of our students with the curricula or the disciplines or the studies they take in our College of Engineering, they actually are able to get really well 
paying internships, co-op positions and so forth throughout the community. It's not only in the state of Virginia, but it goes outside the state. And a lot of feedback we get is the skill sets that they developed in our programs are very strong, highly appreciative. Our students are in all the major pharma companies right now. They're at Merck, they're at Pfizer, they're at GlaxoSmithKline, they're at Biogen. All these major pharma companies are hiring them because they have these unique skill sets that are focused not just on, on research, but on applied research and how to take these, the technologies that they've learned and apply them to real world problems. We are very invested in diversity. So to give you an example, the mechanical engineering department itself, we are 27 faculty, but a fourth of us, so 25% of the faculty are all women. And so that encourages young girls to join mechanical engineering uh, department, which is conventionally very male dominated. I've been here for a long time. I've seen the college start from a small little school and continually grow. We're gonna keep growing, bringing in more research and continue to do our very best to educate our students and put those students in careers that are gonna make them happy, that's focused on engineering and we're gonna keep moving forward in a positive light.